everyone. Welcome back. I'm here. We're here to watch some Star Trek. It has been a tumultuous past couple of weeks for me. So I talked about it a little bit on the last episode, like to the portion that the patrons see, but I'll just let it out here for everybody. So my husband built me a new computer. So I was kind of without a computer for a few days while he was building it and then I had to reformat my hard drive so I spent a day just putting everything like up on a cloud drive so that I could move it to the new computer. I had to reinstall everything, get everything set up, all my settings and so I was like kind of stressing because I'm like I gotta be working right now, I gotta be recording and I wasn't able to and then everything was back and everything was good for the most part and then I got very sick with COVID. And then that took me out for another few days. It wasn't too bad. Mainly like one day I was completely just down for the count. I was in bed. I was in so much pain. I slept for most of the day. And so I wasn't able to record. I was having a cough and I started feeling better. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't end there because then our air conditioning broke in our house. And that is especially bad because it's like the hottest time of the year. It's been it, this coming week is going to be cooler. It's going to be in the 90s. But when our air conditioning went down and it's still down, by the way, it has been uh, like 105 degrees. Um, it's been like 105 degrees so we had to go and get a couple of these this i'm gonna move it eventually but i tried to move it out of the frame as much as i could but this is a portable air conditioning unit that i have in here my husband has one in his computer room but it's so loud that i have to turn it off right now so it's gonna get really hot in here very soon it already is feeling really toasty in here but before we had this it was 90 degrees in our house. We were like trying to sleep in 90 degrees. And fans can only do so much when they're just blowing hot air at you. And then to top it all off, the last thing is that about five or so days after I got COVID, I guess that triggered... Um, a cold sore to appear and so that's why you guys can see I have a scab on my lip you can probably see it was super swollen and horrible looking for a couple days and so I also was like I don't really want to record it's gonna be like distracting I think hopefully it's not too bad now but anyways it's just like it makes me feel uncomfortable you know when I just have this ugly scar or like this um you know, my lip is all swollen on one side and it's just all lopsided and stuff. Anyways, here we are. But I have something to show you guys. So I didn't know if I was allowed to like, I don't know, talk about or show these things because I didn't know if it was like just kind of, you know, keep it kind of quiet. You know, some people don't like to be out in the spotlight. So somebody sent me some gifts through Throne, my Throne website. And basically, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like an Amazon wish list, but you can use other websites besides Amazon as well to send creators things or purchase things that they want as a gift, as a nice gesture. And so you can suggest like to a creator, like, hey, I, I would like to purchase this for you. And then they can accept it or they can decline it. And so I got these. Um, three books. The Trekker's Guide to the Kirk Years is one of them. And, uh, they were sent to me by a, the name on YouTube is JWB. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Cause it's like the same, uh, initials as the author of the book. And then I went back to the throne website because there was like a, a full name that they used. And, uh, indeed, these were sent by Mr. Braun himself. So I thought that was really, really cool. So thank you very much. Obviously, I won't be reading. I mean, I could, I kind of skimmed through a little bit 
and it goes through each episode one by one and um i see there's some lots of like little facts and then like for instance here the menagerie part one gave, gave it an a rank so he ranks them all and i was kind of looking through like oh yeah yeah that was a good episode i agree and then like some episodes that i liked and he <laughs> rated kind of lower i'm like no that that was i love that episode so i look forward to reading these in more detail so i have that and then the other two i have is the trekker's guide to uh, the picard years so that's when i get into the next generation you know when i'm like 40 50 whatever <laughs> and then a non-spoiler guide to the best of star trek the first 50 years wow look at that cool so thank you again very kind of you and if you guys want to check these out you can see them uh you can purchase them on amazon you can get them as an ebook and they are rated really highly by people who bought them and read them so yes anyways now let's get to some star trek today we're going to be watching the third episode of season <coughs> excuse me i'm i'm coughing i will try to mute it as much as i can but i still have this kind of cough that happened after i got covid and um yeah it's been bugging me and it won't go away but anyways it will eventually uh so the paradise syndrome is the title i know everybody has different episodes that they like or dislike and for me um the first episode of this season was not really my favorite um spock's brain but the last episode that we watched the enterprise incident was an excellent one of my favorites and so well season three is just going to be really interesting because it's going to be you know lots of ups and downs so i'm very curious to see if this one's going to be one that i enjoy or that feels just kind of strange like spock's brain did just felt kind of strange like a little bit off anyways thank you guys for listening to my ramblings and um as your reward, we get to watch some Star Trek. So let's do it. Enjoy the Paradise Syndrome. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the comments. Okay, so we're beaming down to a beautiful outdoors scene. Look at those pine trees. Love it. And that lake. I swear that's honeysuckle I smell. It's unbelievable. Exactly like that of Earth on a planet half a galaxy away. What are the odds on such duplication? Uh, pretty high, actually. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Nazis, Romans, <laughs> down to the Constitution, the same thing, <laughs> the flag. <laughs> Readings can't even measure its age accurately. Ancient alien technology, ooh. And how much time did you say we have to investigate? If we are to divert the asteroid, which is on a collision course with this planet, we must warp out of orbit within 30 minutes. Then let's go. Let's find out what life forms are blessed by this environment. May wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me propose something. Let's divert the meteor... What they say? Meteor? Meteorite? Is there a difference? I'm sure there's a difference. One's meteorite's probably smaller. Anyways, let's do that first. And then, they look like? Then we I can swear say hi they're to the American natives. Indians. They are, Doctor. A mixture of Navajo, Mohegan, and Delaware, I believe. It's like discovering Atlantis or Shangri-La. Shouldn't we contact them, Jim? Tell them? Our appearance here would only serve to confuse and frighten them. <laughs> what is he doing with that branch? <laughs> like Atlantis or Shangri-La. I played this point-and-click adventure game in the 90s, really old game where they went to, like, these old civilizations. And, um, yeah... Atlantis, Shangri-La, and uh, what's the other one? Anyways, it was so cool. I love that stuff. Let's go take care of that asteroid. But first, I want another look at that obelisk. Reminds me of Spock's brain where there's like primitive creatures and then some like really advanced technology. Kirk to Enterprise. Yes, sir. Whoa! He's gone. 
Well, careful, don't push any but. Okay. <laughs> yep, they should have just gone straight back to the ship. Dealt with the asteroid. Can I just say, I am so happy that we got a third season because I know like it was it almost never happened and yes even if every episode was like Spock's brain I just want more you know just want to be with the characters more that's the important part as long as they write the characters well can't go wrong prepare to beam us up Mr. Scott We're warping out of orbit leaving you can't be serious, Spock. As the asteroid approaches this planet, even the power of a starship... The devil with an asteroid! It won't get here for two months, Spock! Once the asteroid has been diverted, we'll return here and resume the search. Agreed. Now, he may be injured or dying. Assume this is the planet we're on. This is the approaching asteroid. Everyone on this planet will die, including the captain. In the time it has taken me to explain the problem, the asteroid has moved from here to here. <laughs> He's talking to him like a child. <laughs> it's getting closer. It's getting closer. <laughs> Damn it, Spock. I hate it when you're right. <laughs> Where am I? What place is this? Never heard the like inner thoughts like this. I feel I should know. Oh no. Yeah, familiar. Zapped his memory right out of there. How did I get here? Usually it's like Captain's Log, supplemental, but it can't be in this case because he doesn't even know he's the captain. <laughs> oh, they're gonna think he's a god. He just came out of this. Oh my goodness. We are your people. We've been waiting for you to come to us. Uh. Captain's log, stardate 4843.6. There's the captain's log. We've been en route to the asteroid for several hours. I can't give you a warp nine much longer, Mr. Spock. These engines are beginning to show signs of stress. Beginning to? They've been doing warp nine for hours! Viramani has said that you appeared to her and to her handmaiden from the walls of the temple, just as our legend foretells. He knows nothing of our danger. How can he save us? Save them? Do they know about the asteroid? Elder, words will not save us when the sky is darkened. I say he must prove he is a god. Our legend predicts such danger and promises that the wise ones who planted us here will send a god to save us. Can you do this? Well, um, incidentally, <laughs> that's why he's here. He just doesn't remember. Salish, a terrible thing has happened. The boy was attending the fish nets and he became entangled in them and sank to the bottom of the river. Chest compressions. Chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. He doesn't move. Chest compressions. Mouth to mouth. CPR. There is no sound in the body. There is no light in the eyes. He will move no more. Wait a moment. Oh, tilt the head back. See, he knows, he, he remembers this. Wait. I've never seen this technique. What is this? Leg compressions? He'll be all right now. <laughs> they did the accordion on him and it worked. Only God can breathe life into the dead. Give him the medicine badge. I'm not a doctor, I'm a starship commander. Oh. Oh, he got debadged. He's not gonna like Kirk. He's gonna like him even less now. Full power, Mr. Spock. All engines stop. Hold position here. All engines stop, sir. Prepare to activate deflectors. So they're gonna they're gonna have it bounce off the deflector shields? I was thinking they were gonna use like a tractor beam or something to kind of slingshot it or I don't know. Activate 
activate deflectors. Okay, not a shield. Deflector beam. Do your deflection, Mr. Sulu. Not enough, Mr. Spock. Free circuit power to engines. Maximum speed, heading 37 mark zero. Heading will put us directly in the asteroid's path, sir. What for? To destroy it. A narrow beam concentrated on a single spot will split that mass. Jim won't be able to get out of his path. That, Doctor, is another calculated risk we must take. I'm, I'm with Spock. Let's, let's do what he says. So I guess this is a good time to... We could talk about, like, the functions of the ship as far as shields and, like, beams. You should be working on our ritual cloak. It is because of tradition that I cannot marry you. But you are promised to me. Tribal priestess and medicine chief are always joined. Well, you're not the medicine chief anymore, yeah. Salish, choose another. I wish no other. I mean, I don't blame him. Look at her. If you could choose, would you choose me? That's a dangerous question. Ooh. That answers that. Tell me about the wise ones. The wise ones brought us here from far away. They chose a medicine chief to keep the secret of the temple and to use it when the sky darkens. His father did not wish to share his power too soon. He died before he told Salish the secret. Oh, ouch. But I did not know what you wish to be called. What may I tell him? C-3PO. Kerr. Kerrock? Have we displeased you? No, no, everything is fine. All I can tell you is that I'm happy and peaceful here. I'm not sure, but I think I've never felt that way before. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's just that he's never taken a vacation. <laughs> he's finally getting a vacation. But his happiness is with this ship and his crew. Here there is much time for everything. Lovely music. They are close to that thing. Very close. Lock all phases on that mark. Maximum intensity, narrow beam. This is one firing. Vulcan won't be satisfied till these panels are a puddle of lead. Phase four fire. Commence simultaneous bombardment. Uh oh. No, oh, Scotty. My poor parents. Poor what? Bairns? Oh! We're playing dress-up now. If it pleases you, I would like to name the joining day. The joining day? If there's another, I will step aside. Yeah, there's no one else in my mind or my heart. Name the joining day. Oh boy. Kirk's about to get married. The sooner our happiness together begins, the longer it will last. AKA, let's hurry up before Tomorrow. you change your mind. <laughs> Our star drive is completely burned out. The only thing we have left is impulse power. You took your calculated risk in your calculated Vulcan way and you lost. I accept the responsibility, Doctor. Resume heading 883. Back to that planet without warp speed. It'll take months, Spock. And that asteroid will be four hours behind us. We might not be able to save anything, including the ship. Spock's trying his best. All you've been doing is staring at that blasted obelisk. Another calculated Vulcan risk, Doctor. <laughs> Wonder if he'll be able to decipher the writing. It's a time for joy for all my people. Except one. I have found paradise. Surely no man has ever attained such happiness. Oh my goodness. Even though you be a god, Kirak, I cannot permit this joining. You bleed. Behold a god who bleeds. Ooh. Here we go. Nice. Kirk's always got the best moves. 
Oh, love the drop kicks. Kill me, Kirak, or I will not rest until I prove to my people that you are no god. He just walks away. Dang. That's so cool. It's like he has wings like a bird. That's beautiful. I believe those symbols are the key. You've hardly eaten or slept for weeks. Now, if you don't let up, you're going to collapse. You made a command decision. Jim would have done the same. My prescription is rest now. Do I have to call the security guards to enforce it? And right back up. <laughs> Look at Carefree Karak. <laughs> well, this looks like it was fun to film. Just frolic around in the forest and then kiss a cute girl. I mean, <laughs> what a job. I'm so happy. If it weren't for the dreams, I, my mind would be completely at peace. Oh, the dreams. But you no longer saw the strange lodge which moves through the sky. He's dreaming about his ship. See faces. I feel I, I should know, know them. I feel my place is with them. I don't deserve this happiness. So he'll be here for almost two months by the time they get there. I bear your child. <gasps> <laughs> you. <laughs> and with the power of the lamp, which turns night into day, we can cook twice as much food. And so that is why you made the lamp, Kurok. So that I would never know when it was night and I would be oh. forever cooking. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, to keep her in the kitchen. <laughs> Seems like a pretty intense storm. Only you can save us. But I can't do anything about the wind, the sky. You must go inside the temple and make the blue flame come out. Blue flame? It has a la some kind of laser weapon? Maybe? Well, what do you wait for, God? Your robes? Take care of Miramani. Yeah, don't try anything. Quiet. The symbols on the obelisk are not words. They are musical notes. You mean it's nothing but a song? In a way, yes. The obelisk is a marker. It was left by a super race known as the Preservers. They passed through the galaxy rescuing primitive cultures which were in danger of extinction and seeding them, so to speak. I've always wondered why okay. there were so many humanoids scattered through the galaxy. You have to find that deflector and put it back into working order. I guess that accounts for a, a lot of the... Uh very similar to human races oh my goodness what how what is that helping oh so much for his peaceful vacation oh my god these people are awful jeez yes my boys are here i need nurse chapel my wife. My wife. <laughs> That's the first first thing he says. Wife? Hallucinations? Jim. I love Nurse Chapel. Why were you being stoned? Kurok did not get back into the temple. Naturally, since he did not come from there. I saw him come come. His brain is unimpaired. Everything else is functioning normally except his memory. 65 minutes to end of safety margin. Oh, man. So they have about an hour. Is he strong enough for the Vulcan mind fusion? We have no choice. Here we go. No. James Kirk. Miramani! I am Kira. Ah! Spock! What is it? His mind. He's an extremely dynamic individual. 
<laughs> it worked. Oh, good. This obelisk is one huge deflector mechanism. It is imperative that we get inside immediately. I don't know how to get inside. Play the song. Play the song. You mean entry can be gained by playing certain notes on a musical instrument? That would be one method. Tonal control, consonants and vowels. I must have hit it accidentally when I contacted the ship. What were his words? Occur to Enterprise. Hi, Captain. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I remember now. Get the Enterprise out of the danger zone. The landing party's expendable. The Enterprise isn't. Here are money. Bones, do what you can. I wanted them to play a song. <laughs> Careful. I must have hit something accidentally. Oh, yeah, it jolted him. There's more symbols. Can you read them? If this series of relays activated in their proper so spot. Simple. Just press the right button. <laughs> Nice. Well, now he's going to have to say goodbye to his pregnant wife. She had bad internal injuries, Jim. Oh, no. Will she live? Yes. No? no? I thought yes, but the child won't. What? Bones, there's got to be something you can do. It is true you are safe. And so are your people, Mary. I knew you would save them, my chief. When I am better, they killed her. It will be as it was. If that's what you want. We will live long and happy lives. Oh. This is I sad. Love you all. Always. And I love you, Miramani. What are, why are they doing this to me? What? Why? Whoa. That was an episode. Kirk got married, fell in love, got married, impregnated his wife, and then she dies. Whoa, that's crazy. That was some really heavy stuff. And when they started throwing the stones at Kirk, that really shocked me. I guess that other guy, he had such a grudge. Um, I don't remember his name, but the former medicine chief or whatever, I guess he persuaded them to, to completely go against Kirk. But I mean, geez, the timing was just like... <sighs> How is it going to help them? They're in danger. How is it going to help them to kill him like that? I don't know. And then to keep throwing stones when she walked up there? Their priestess? I loved the setting, like the set. I always love it when they go to like an, an actual outdoor place with like trees and stuff. And then they had this obelisk thing that was really cool i love the design of that kirk losing his memory was a interesting twist he gets to for a moment live a whole other life where he's happy and at peace but there's something at the back of his mind trying to pull him back to reality to where he actually belongs which is of course on the enterprise and out in space and doing his uh, Kirk things. When Kirk said it was the first time he was happy and at peace, I was kind of like, well, wait, wait a minute. Like, you're happy on the Enterprise. That's, that's, that's who you are. Of course, he doesn't have any memories of the Enterprise at this time, but I like to think of it more as he's just really in need of a nice, peaceful vacation. And it might have been the first time that he had a a very peaceful existence except for the fact that that guy was trying to kill him with a knife but i don't think peaceful is what necessarily gives kirk that purpose that he craves and that adventure i loved the outfits 
and the sets that they made inside the tents. I thought visually everything was really cool with that. And we got some really awesome scenes with Bones and Spock, which are always some of my favorites. They're back and forth and that scene where Spock was talking to Bones like he was a small child and when he was showing like visually the meteor, the asteroid getting closer and closer to the planet, it kind of made me think of Spock with like a spoon of baby food and he's like, here it comes, here comes the airplane. <laughs> but yeah, that ending just really shocked me with the girl dying like that. I mean, I figured they couldn't have like a Kirk baby running around. I thought maybe the child would have been killed, but I didn't think that she was going to die too. That's just too harsh. That's just too much for my little heart to handle. And we have learned about the preservers. So yeah, I guess that kind of explains is a way to explain how all these like Earth-like civilizations kind of popped up around the galaxy. Okay, so I had to go back and re-watch the explanation just to make sure I understood it correctly. They don't give too much information. I don't think we can really say just from this episode alone if they, the preservers rescued primitive civilizations from Earth specifically, but I think that's what they're implying there. And so they take these people to save them from extinction and put them on planets that are very similar to Earth. I mean, they did say that these people were literally Native Americans. <laughs> so I guess they came from Earth. It could maybe account for like m the Miri episode, for the Omega Glory, maybe a piece of the action, even though their mob culture was brought like after the fact by an outsider. I'm like looking through the list of episodes now. Maybe The Return of the Archons. I don't think the Apple because those people had a very like specific look to them, even though they were humanoid in nature. Possibly from a private little war, maybe those people. Bread and Circuses. Definitely could be, right? So that's kind of interesting. What do you guys make of that? Are there any like past episodes that could be maybe explained by these preservers taking some humans from Earth and putting them on another planet somewhere to grow and live over there? I'd say this episode gets some really high marks in certain areas, especially with the Spock and the Bones interactions, things like that. The music, I really enjoyed the music in this one. Uh, I think this is going to be pretty, pretty strong episode as far as the rankings go for the season three ones. Definitely a solid episode. I liked it. I hope you guys like this episode too. But if you don't, that's fine. Let me know either way. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.